on board. In this module, we will see how to recover an unconscious casualty onto a boat and how to administer first aid. Rescue training. In order to be a responsible diver, you must be able to deal with an emergency competently and efficiently. To do this, you have to know all the recovery techniques and first aid, and be adequately trained to put your knowledge into practice. There is a risk of losing those mental and physical skills you acquired during training. You therefore have to train regularly in those emergency drills, particularly those that you are unlikely to practice in your normal diving activities. This is particularly true for the CPR techniques you learned during the PSS First Aid CPR course. So this is why the certification is only valid for two years and then has to be renewed. Your task is to keep up to date, also because the guidelines are constantly being modified to find the simplest method that can be applied by anyone in any situation. Getting on board. In modules 4 and 7, you learned how to bring a diver in difficulty onto the shore. Instead, we are now going to examine the situation of recovering a casualty on board a boat. In the case of an unconscious diver, the ideal objective is to get them on board while keeping them in a horizontal position with their head out of the water. Before looking at the various ways of doing this, let's examine the order of priorities for recovering a casualty onto the boat. Assess if conditions are safe enough for you to act. Take action so as to never put yourself in danger. Prevent water getting into the casualty's airways. See if there is someone else who can help you. Choose an easy exit point. Choose the method of exit with the least risk of further injury. Act rapidly. Bring the casualty to an area that is safe and suitable for administering first aid. If the casualty is not breathing, administer AV. Recovery with one rescuer. Some of the techniques you have already learned can also be used for recovering a casualty on board. For example, the lifeguard's lift can be used for bringing an exhausted diver onto a rubber dinghy. The back carry method can be a way of carrying a casualty up the ladder of a large boat if the casualty is not too heavy and can collaborate. The worst possible situation is when, after having rescued an unconscious diver alone, you also have to get them on board without anyone else's help. If the boat has low sides, such as a rubber dinghy, it is best to use the technique of lifting in stages. Bring the casualty to the side of the rubber dinghy or boat and tie a line to one of their arms in a way that they are still floating face up. Depending on the type of boat and its size, you must take great care not to capsize the boat due to the unequal distribution of the weight. If instead you have to recover an unconscious diver onto a boat with high sides, you can use the ladder method, but only if the casualty weighs much less than you do. Once the casualty has been brought on board, if they are not breathing, lay them on their back on the deck, open their airways and contact the emergency services. Recovery with two or more rescuers. Also with several rescuers helping, it is of fundamental importance not to do things in haste but to work in a coordinated, efficient manner, respecting the priorities. On a rib or small boat, you can use the method of lifting in stages, but this time lifting the casualty in two, a two-man lift.
The rescuers can also position the casualty alongside the boat and roll them up the gunnel using the technique of rolling on the side. However, if the boat is small, it is best if the rescuers crouch down to lower the barry center as much as possible. Staying upright could compromise the stability of the boat. Larger boats present fewer problems because there is often a platform at the stern. Recovery using additional aids. On a boat, it is possible to find numerous objects that are useful for recovering divers on board. For example, the boat's gangplank or a bench can be placed over the side and lifted by a team of rescuers. A fast and easy way to lift a casualty is by using a towel, a net or ropes. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. In order to administer CPR, you need a rigid surface and a limited amount of space. Even the best cardiopulmonary resuscitation techniques are useless unless the emergency services arrive. So always confirm that the emergency rescue services have been contacted. In the meantime, begin the primary evaluation and eventual cardiopulmonary resuscitation using the techniques you have learned. If the diver is in respiratory arrest and an oxygen kit is available and you have been trained to use it in emergency situations, you can give oxygen-enriched CPR as you learned on the PSS Oxygen in Diving Emergencies course. If you get tired, another rescuer can take over the CPR as long as they are also trained to do so. Unless you become completely exhausted, do not interrupt resuscitation until the casualty is handed over to the emergency services or has begun breathing again. While one or two rescuers take care of the casualty, the others must prepare for the arrival of the rescue services. They should check how long it will be before the emergency services arrive and prepare everything to make their arrival easier. If you are the only rescuer present, you must contact the emergency rescue services by telephone or radio as soon as you get the casualty on board. While you are contacting the emergency services, the casualty's airways must be open. In the recovery position, if they are breathing, or on their back with their head extended if CPR is necessary. Once the emergency services have been contacted, Continue cardiopulmonary resuscitation until they arrive or you become too exhausted to continue. In the next module, we will look at other problems that could occur on a dive, such as entanglement, becoming trapped, separation from your buddy or group, or not finding your way back to the ascent line. We will also look at what to do if a diver loses consciousness underwater. See you soon.